page 32 Silent Night this is a very famous melody a very common melody most anybody who's heard any Christmas music at all has heard this melody however every arrangement can be a little bit different so let's just check and see what this arrangement is doing three four time at two sharps we're in the key of D major make sure you can do the scale the D major scale one octave up and down at least I'm going to attack the right hand first. Let's just double check. The, I don't think the rhythm is a problem, but the, the fingering. Let's make sure we got that. Third, third finger here. You're in this position, I guess. Not real good, but okay. I don't recommend it, but all right, one and two. They want thumb here. I prefer to stay out here. I don't want to come up here if I don't have to. So I'm going to reach down to your second finger here. So it's one and two and three and one, two, three. One and two. One, two, rest. During the rest, I come up. One, two. Don't forget this C sharp. It's in the key signature. Two. During the rest, come down. One, two, three. One and two. Now, if you don't want to put a thumb on that, I and mean, you can, there's nothing else. You can lift up and do that if you want. Because you have a rest, you can come up here. That's fine. If you don't want to put the thumb on that black key, then in the measure before, when you're here, instead of third, use fourth finger. That way you changed. And you can do that if you want. But the thumb works on this F sharp if you want. That's okay. And then going on, top of page 33. And again, the same fingering. If you don't want to put a thumb on that black or on that yeah on that black key, then two. I'll leave that up to you. And then next line, up here. And I do a second finger on that C sharp, so I can keep my hand out here. Two, three. And then here with the little finger. Rest, come down. Now they're telling you to. And the fourth finger. And then come down second finger. Or, in the last line, you can if you want you scratch up his little finger. No way you're, whichever. Pick one and stick with it. Whichever fingering you want. Left hand, well, we've got two voices going on, so we want to hold them down. That is the dotted half note. Hold it down for the whole measure and just add the D to it, the other one. So it's one, two, three, one. They, they've got that. I think that's an error. You gotta have a really large hand, because you want to hold that down. I'm going to suggest go ahead and thumb on that again. Second measure, thumb. Now, if your head's big enough for the second line, you can use second finger or thumb, whichever one you want. And then next one, scrunch up. Fourth finger. Third line down, second measure. Hold this down as you play the C sharp. Two, one. And you can use fourth finger for the next measure. Now they want thumb. They say jump in that sweet. Don't jump. Just stay there. So, so you, the third line last measure, you're here. They want you to jump. They, they want you to move. Here. You can lift up and move down, I suppose. Second finger. This way I can connect everything with the hands. Now another fingering you can use here, if you want, is you ended the third line here. It's going on, I can use second finger on that D, but then I'm going to cross the thumb under and here. And that, that way I'm in position to do all the rest of the line. I don't have to move anymore. I'm right there. So at the beginning it's here. Pretty straightforward actually in the left hand I think. Let's go down to the on page 33 last line. Here. Then they want third three. That's fine. I like that. That's okay. And then this last couple measures. Three one. And they want here. That's awkward. It's doable, but it's awkward. It's a C natural though. 
There's other fingerings, but they don't connect all the notes easily. So I'm going to go ahead and try this fingering if you can. The 3-1, then 4-2, and then 5-3. Yeah. Do the best you can. Just try and get the notes down at the same time. Put the hands together. It's a Make sure you're holding these notes down. Now here you have a rest in the right hand to come up, but not in the left hand. Rest. And again you got a rest in the right hand, but not the left. So go ahead and try and get the heads together and then go back and get rid of the hesitations. Remember if you don't quite like the arrangement you can rearrange my book, but please don't do that yet. Learn it the way it's written first and then after you know it, then if you want to rearrange it, go ahead. That's fine. As far as the articulation goes, we're going to slurk. Just lift up between. It's like taking a breath. Of course if you have rest, you have to be quiet. Lift up so forth. In the left hand, try and connect it all as best you can. So. so I'm lifting up the right hand but not the left. Rest. Lift up. Now, look out because this curved line is for different things and it's confusing. If you look at the last line on page 32, you have a curved line over the whole thing. That's your phrase. That's the phrase. You just connect all that together. But in addition to that, you have other curved lines, like in the first measure, the third line. That's connected. And next measure, that's connected. And the reason is because it goes with the words. You're singing the same syllable or the same word for both notes, and that's how they indicate it in the music. Not all publishers indicate it that way. But the point is, the little slurred line that you think is a slur, it's for the singing and not how you play it. You connect it all the way through. The phrase overrides it. You connect it. Connect that. So don't let these little curved lines throw you. That's different. The singers pay attention to that, not the, not the piano player. So put in the phrasing as best you can. Then dynamics, soft, this is a gentle piece, put somebody to sleep. The left has to be very soft. area. You're not going to stay exactly that. You're going to get a little outside. Get to know it and get to feeling it. And, there. and you're st basically staying in that area. And then the second line on page 33, you have a poco crescendo. Crescendo means get louder. Poco means a little. Get a little louder. Not a lot. Just there. Up to about a moderately soft. Right in there. So you stay here soft. Crescendo a little bit in the left hand. That gives this crescendo gives the illusion that this held note is getting louder. That we it's an illusion we use in piano. It's we make it sound like or you think the held note is actually getting louder because the other stuff is getting louder. So it's it's the line again. And then when you play the F, you've got to match what happened. Because that's still got to be louder than the left hand, but the left hand's getting louder. That means this has to be louder. And then all of a sudden, you're soft. And there's 
should be turned on though at the end. And you can also come down and get softer too. I want it at the last two measures. I want to hear the D throughout the whole thing. All of this has to be. Don't cover up the D. We want to hear that. Then on well, speed wise, a very calm piece. It's it's just a nice slow through a waltz type tempo. Nice gentle tempo all the way through. Now there is a DC at the end of the page 33. Again, it simply means you go back to the beginning, but that's if you're singing. And you see the other two verses. So you just keep playing the whole piece over and over if you're singing it. When the play with me, I'm only going to play it one time though. And I really think there should be a thin and thick bar line at the end of that last line on page 33 because that's the symbol for the end of a piece. You know, they're not ending the piece. Where is it? Well, that's it. But they don't show that's the end. Now they added pedal. Well, they're simplifying pedal. They're just overlapping everything and they're pedaling everything. They're just changing it with basically with the harmony. If I pedal it the way they're showing, this is what it sounds like. And the reason I do this is because it's important you learn to hear the, the effect the pedal has on the sound. The, what's it doing? You learn it without pedal first, so you, your hands and everything are doing what they're supposed to do. Then when you add the pedal, you can more accurately hear the difference the pedal makes. That's here. Overlapping. The hands do their thing first and then the pedal overlaps it. Lags behind it. So forth. I think that's blurry. You see, when you have a slower piece, you have more time to hear the blurriness. If we're a fast piece, we can get away with some blurriness because the notes go by so quick. But here we got time to hear them. Here. I'm going to recommend, uh, for the most part, we pedal the first two beats of the major and lift up on beat three. Also, you hear the phrasing this way again. Now, on the second line, the last two measures, it doesn't really matter because there's not a lot's happening. You can pedal all the way through them if you want. But lift up at the end of the phrase so we hear the in the right hand. Lift up with the right hand. Last line on page 32, they don't pedal those, that first measure, don't pedal. You don't really need to pedal that line at all. And top of page 33, you can pedal the first measure because we can connect the repeated notes if we pedal it. And then lift up and don't pedal the rest of the lines. So that first line on page 33. The second line, the pedal the first measure, but lift up on beat three in the second. I don't pedal those last two measures. I prefer to have that clear. If I'm going to pedal them, I'm going to have to change the pedal with each note. I just don't pedal those two measures. And then the last line, don't pedal the third beat. And then they finally tell you, you that the last three measures or so, you can pedal it the way they're showing because. Of... There, that's fine. 
Now as far as the retardando goes, if there's singers and you're singing it and you're doing multiple verses, I would recommend you not slow down until the very last verse. Because with singers, unless you have a conductor, it messes them up. They don't know what they don't know how much you're slowing down, they don't know what's going on. So just keep a steady beat there. And then you repeat back, just keep keep a steady beat. And then on the last verse, however many verses you sing, then you can slow down. That kind of tells, oh, by the way, this is it. We're done. We're not singing any more verse, verses. You know, relax. That's it. That's what I recommend. to play with you very slowly. I'm just going to do it one time. I'll give us three counts and let's see if we're just checking the notes. I think the rhythms are okay. It's the notes that may be a problem. I'm going to pedal it as, as what I suggested as best I can. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'm just going to play the notes and the rhythms and the pedaling and that's it. I'm going to try and lift up between the phrases too. One, ready, go. Thank you.